The Byzantine Empire has a secret path in the campaign that we can follow. However, it's not obvious and comes with some risk. This can turn us into the Latin Empire, which will have many challenges to overcome. But beware, Byzantium also has a second secret path to play. If you leave 1000 likes on this episode, I'll record an episode about it. A little spoiler. I'll be a vassal of the Ottoman Empire. Hello imperialists, it's Lucas here. Who would have thought that Byzantium has secrets hidden in its events that we can explore? Well, these secret events aren't that secret anymore as I see them on the EU4 wiki in the section related to the latest DLC. But you still need to know where to look. For now, I'll share the first method, where beginning is basically similar to a normal start. First, we transport our army to Morea, led by our king. Wow, he got one siege point. Pretty cool. Better not give rivals away at the beginning, it's worth waiting until December 12. In several of my starting versions, when I rivaled Epirus before 30, they quickly allied with either Genoa or Venice. As for our privileges, here we only take monarchy points. They'll come in handy for generating over time. Grab land as usual, recruit as much army as possible to have a chance at a cheaper military advisor. Unfortunately, remember that due to this privilege, we can't take additional cheap loans. Great, I have an advisor with discipline. Getting him won't be a problem because we have such low manpower reserves that we only need to stop recruiting troops. We'll wait for two months and we'll get him. Alternatively, we can speed up the whole process and, for example, burn some manpower in our province. For example, here it will be sufficient, but that's it for privileges. We do nothing more. We want the lowest influence from our estates, although I must admit that our military estate still has a significant influence there's little chance we'll recover that land. Great, we got an advisor for discipline. And Epirus just allied with Albania, so it's a restart. We really don't want Epirus to have any alliance. It will unnecessarily lengthen the war. A few minutes later. A small correction, I also had to burn development in Corinth. Yes, I know I'll have to expand that province. Tough. Let our ruler lead and let's go to war with Epirus. Conquering Epirus won't be problematic at all. Meanwhile, our diplomacy can start improving relations with Poland, Austria, Hungary, or even Lithuania if it doesn't have a union under Poland, then we don't need to, so maybe with Hungary. Surprisingly, we don't have to immediately improve relations with the Pope, but you can do that too. Very important for our local path is to keep the Florentine resolutions in force when we have to accept them. We don't reject this union, we have to maintain it. In the meantime, for military points, I'm developing Corinth's development, of course, to the fourth level and no more. Epirus fell and we don't really want this battle, but oh well. Here you can do two things, you can either get art for yourself and take Epirus as a vassal. Remember that either way you'll get a full core on him from a mission and you'll annex him for free. Alternatively, you can conquer everything for yourself. And honestly, I conquer everything for myself because we'll be weaker then. We won't have a vassal army and we won't have a vassal fleet. And the point is, we'll have to be very, very weak in a moment. Oops, totally forgot to make Ypres my rival. Remember that, please. Okay, now we can calmly pick our next rivals, which I should have done by December 12th, but I completely blanked on that. Except maybe Venice because there's a chance they'll support us, or maybe not, but there's also a chance they'll attack us. So, I don't know, up to you. I'll make Venice my rival though. Oh, but we can sell some land. Okay, but maybe later. On a side note, we can also stir things up here. Reduce autonomy in these Greek territories. One mission I'm working on is moving our fort from Morea to Corinth. Now, the trickiest part of our strategy, so pay attention, we're pulling off a move here. Specifically, we pull out the cavalry, almost the entire army, leave a thousand troops and disband the army. We want to get attacked and I left that thousand for my troops to train and I can abdicate my ruler now, so it's up to you. You can count on me dying while training your troops, or you can abdicate your ruler at this moment. Not the heir, the ruler. The only other super important thing for us is to remember that as soon as the Ottomans attack you, you've got to activate defensive edicts everywhere. After disbanding my armies, yeah, Ottoman troops are heading towards my border. Look, they're coming, they're coming. Didn't see that coming so fast, did I? So let's activate the defensive edict here even way earlier and see how the Ottomans approach my borders. What should I expect? Probably an attack soon, right? Are you attacking me? Hello? Hello? Oh no, the Ottoman Empire just attacked us and we have no army. What are we poor folks gonna do? And honestly, our goal now is to survive. We've got a year for that. At least that's what the tooltip on the EU4 wiki says. We've got 12 months to trigger a certain event, so we have to maintain the church union and be in a defensive war. That's super important. And Osman has to lead the attacking side against us. Now basically, all we're doing is waiting. Seriously, you can hit speed 5 and wait. The impending disaster. And here's my advice. Grab forts to make them last as long as possible. Alternatively, 
obviously you can take a risk and grab morale for your army, but I'm going for the fort. Yeah, we're getting support from the west, but it's not the support I was hoping for. Hey, Giovanni showed up. Papal assertiveness. As the darkest day loomed ever closer, a letter arrived from Pope Eugenius IV, accusing Constantine IX of dishonesty and insufficient action. He demands that the Byzantine Basileus take a more hawkish stance on the union between the church, and only then will he call upon the might of the Catholic community to support Byzantium in the war against the Ottoman Empire. And now, my dear friends, this is the event. It only triggered very, very late for me, so there might be another restart soon, and it actually happened for me only on the second try. So this path isn't 100% guaranteed. As you can see, we're on the brink of collapse here too. If you want to go down, well, reject the proposal, but if you want to survive, I suggest you agree to the Union, or rather, become the Latin Empire. You'll change your faith, but don't worry. We'll have a chance to return to orthodoxy because we have the return to orthodoxy decision. And remember, this path disables the possibility of obtaining achievements for Byzantium. Alright, let's hope this fortress doesn't crumble within 30 days, which, let's be real, has slim chances. Nope, still standing strong at 41 days, so there's a good shot it won't fall within the next 30 days. Now, we're rallying all of Europe for a crusade against the Ottoman Empire. Hooray! We've gone yellow, and we're fully under occupation. Yeah, the Pope threw us a lifeline. So now, the Ottoman Empire better watch out. We've got God and the Pope on our side. Hungary joined the coalition. Poland joined the coalition. Austria joined the coalition. Albania's got our back. Victory is practically in the bag now. Honestly, it's looking much better, but that fortress better not take a nosedive. Basically, all that's left for us to do is crank up to speed 5 and keep an eye on what our allies are up to in the fight for our freedom. Hopefully this time, they won't let the Ottoman Empire trample all over them, because usually they shouldn't do that. They should survive and crush the Ottoman Empire, at least that's how it's been so far. After a few setbacks, victory is in the bag. The crucial thing now is sinking the Ottoman Navy. It's a big deal, something you've got to keep an eye on to wreck the Ottoman Navy in this war. Totally forgot about that. We don't have a port anywhere, so we've got to sail over here because destroying the Ottoman navy allows us to move into Anatolia, which honestly is our main goal in this war. It's not about reconquering. We want to conquer all the provinces where we have no territorial claims. By the way, in the meantime, my previous ruler bit the dust. There was a rebellion here. Didn't show you that, but I'm spilling the beans now. Beautiful Osman, no chance, absolutely none. Right now, it's 63,000 plus 25,000 infantry. Cavalry. Well, against that, Osman doesn't stand a chance in this war. Meanwhile, let's improve relations with all the countries we might want to ally with after this war, because at the moment it's looking kinda meh. Poland. We've got a chance for an alliance here. The Pope. It would be handy to have that alliance. And can we seal the deal? Thrilled to bits. We need one more ally. Of course, an alliance with Serbia would be nice too, to snag 250 free Ducats from our remaining missions. So, you see, I'm more into to diplomatic maneuvers than anything else. I decided not to sell off land because honestly, I'll get way more when I conquer Osman, right? So it's better to wait. So I'll tell you, this war isn't going as smoothly as I thought. Who would have guessed? Despite having a colossal advantage, some countries are already running on empty, like Hungary, Poland, and so on. That's why I borrowed some cash, hired mercenaries, and started supporting my allies to keep them glued to me. Otherwise, they tend to scatter and get picked off by Osman in battles. Although now we're at a stage where the Ottoman forces are seriously drained. Basically, we're knocking them down one by one. Check out the mighty Poland, a nice army. Okay, let's keep bashing them. Now, I'll tell my allies to detach from me, and I'm off to conquer the fort in Ankara. Once these two forts fall, the war is practically over. I'm also setting up a spy network in Karaman, because I'll try to grab a province here to attack other Sunni countries before the Mamluks get to them. I also took the fourth military technology, but I'm holding off on the other techs, because I'm not sure which one I'll need later. Mainly, it's about snagging territories for myself. In this war, as I mentioned, we're taking everything we have no claims on. Now, let's find ourselves. Oh, here I am. Or before we claim Caraman, let's claim Naples. True, I still see that the Union is Aragonese Neapolitan, but it's always a good opportunity to attack later. Oh, Poland dropped out of this war, boomer, was hoping for an alliance with Poland. It would have made things much easier. Now, money-wise, we literally get nothing as the Latin Empire.
empire. Zero zilch, it all goes to our allies, so we don't want that. Honestly, I'm thinking of wrapping up the war like this. Oh no, it's going to Albania. Oh yes, the Ottoman Empire suffered zero losses in this war. Quite an interesting case. And our borders after the first war looked like this. Basically, we could attack more countries if it weren't for the fact that I have a lot of aggressive expansion. I mean, I have four points less than I thought. Whatever. But we need to manage our country. First things first, we reduce war exhaustion. Hey, it's not that bad. I spent fewer points than I thought. So maybe we can even boost stability. We won't disband the mercenary army. We'll need it to crush rebellions. And now I know it was worth selling that land before the war. I'd have 100 gold instead of 67. Although, well, okay, this amount increases as everything recalculates one after another. So maybe it won't be that bad after all. Eventually, we'll reduce autonomy and so on. So we'll be selling land with a profit. Let's ask the Serbs for financial help. And basically, we can calmly proceed with our missions. We get cheaper mercenaries, increased morale for our army. We've also conquered Epirus. So at this point, we're getting an army 15 years stronger. Just the entire peace period with the Ottoman Empire. Who would have thought we'll have? Still riding the post-war debt wave with a cool 400 gold on my tab, I could pay off some, but let's be real, not worth it. Let's spice things up with a war against the Serbs. As for converting provinces, not in the cards. Soon, we'll restore the one true faith for our country and rise again as Byzantium. Honestly, not quite getting this one hour against Ottomans in the last 50 years indicator. I mean, I just won. Since it's been a few days since the first war, I gave it a spin without Iron Man mode a few times to test how often this event triggers when becoming the Latin Empire. I'll spill the beans. With Iron Man, it happened 4 out of 10 times, always after the fall of Constantinople, practically when the fortress in Corinth was on its last legs, triggering after around 3 years. Without Iron Man, it happened 8 out of 10 times, usually within the first 3 months of the war. Something fishy here, let me know your experiences. Ha ha ha, looks like war with the Serbs might be off the table. Just got a warning from the Ottoman Empire that they'll pounce on us the moment we attack any common neighbors. Let's butter up our relationships with the countries around us. Maybe we'll score some interesting alliances or perhaps the Ottomans will lift the warning. Not holding my breath, though. Now, the trickiest part for me is honestly these rebellions. Rebellions everywhere, bleeding me dry. But I reckon we'll figure it out in no time. It's a way tougher start than usual, but not the end of the world. I think the top priority now is fixing up the army. And it's baffling that I don't have the 15% morale bonus. Oh, maybe I'll get it when I disband all my mercenary buddies and recruit a regular army of 20,000. Integrated Athens, which should be handy for our mission on the Athenian Renaissance. Didn't see that alliance coming. But hey, at this point, I've managed to lock in an alliance with the Austrian Empire, the Austrian Emperor, no less. Let's roll out our maritime doctrine, tactics, and let's do it sooner rather than later. Also, time to start building some galleys. Honestly, this two year stretch is perfect for fleet construction. Since the Ottoman Empire buddied up with France, we need to hit Serbia and cut off the Ottomans Anatolian connection, adding Turkish culture to the acceptable list. Modernize our army though I don't have any good cavalry, so it's not a big deal, but let's give it a makeover anyway. Upgraded the wall, something I should have done ages ago, but it's all necessary for this mission. If I'm being cagey, there's a significant chance of going bankrupt soon. I'm carrying quite a debt load, unless a war with the Ottoman Empire pops off, which is likely. Ottoman troops are chilling in Anatolia. We're a tech ahead, just continuously trying to revamp our army, but it's no walk in the park. Oddly, I'm just waiting for that fleet to finish building, and then we're taking on the Serbs. First governmental reform, so I'm temporarily jacking up taxes for this era. I need money and I need it bad. Got called into a succession war against France. I won't be much help to the Austrians here, no secrets there. If possible, I'll peace out of this war. Since I'm struggling to snag an alliance with Poland, let's buddy up with Hungary. Heads up, if you get called into a war against Poland, we're dropping this alliance, of course. So no royal marriages with Hungary for now. Oddly enough, the union of Naples and Aragon is still going strong. Is it the first king? Nope, don't tell me Lux still still not on my side, and the Aragonese Neapolitan Union survived. That's only a 10% chance. At least it's keeping things interesting. Alright, got the third morale bonus. Did this finally give us the coveted 15%? Yup, hired a slightly better advisor for a moment, and we're finally ditching this darn military reform. Fix it, the army. Folks, in one click. Meaning, it's crystal clear for me now, we just need that plus 15 morale. And remember, we started with a whopping minus 15, so that's a cool 30% to gain. Keep an eye on that in future campaigns. You gotta hustle to grab all those morale bonuses from missions and events. Activate defensive edicts everywhere. 
especially in Anatolia because, as I mentioned, there's an Ottoman army chilling here. We can approach this in two ways, scrap all the forts and let the Ottomans take over Anatolia. Without forts, they get minimal war score, meaning war points. The second way is to fire up the edicts, keep the forts active, and hope we can snag those forts, that fort, and the capital faster. This should end our war with the Ottomans, where we'll pocket some cash, war reparations, and hopefully break their alliance with France. And I'm hoping all this before bankruptcy hits after this war. For now, our fleet is doing much better against the Ottoman one. Hee <laughs> hee, wow! We totally sank it, broke through the walls, so we're storming the forts. I mean, I don't know if it's a good idea, you'll find out soon. Meanwhile, we're wrecking the Serbian army, because look at what I just did to them. They were on that fort. My fleet is out, blocking the Serbian army from retreating. Thanks, game over. Achieved all goals against the Ottoman Empire, broke their alliance, took nearly the max money and war reparations. This should slash my debt in half, ending the war with the Serbs like this. I only need two provinces from them. Honestly, I'm going bankrupt. It's not worth paying off this hefty debt, just expanding that gold mine and making sure we won't have any more rebellions, period. In this campaign, I'll go for the following idea build, just combo these ideas and it'll be incredibly powerful for conquering this country. And if I were to continue and wanted to conquer the world as Byzantium, I'd then go for diplomatic and administrative. No need for more ideas unless you're going for a hardcore conquest from the get-go, then diplomatic and administrative right off the bat. Kinda regret not pulling off the Burgundy Union, I tried, hope you gave it a shot in your playthrough. But but I didn't want to take either an alliance or a royal marriage. What happened here? Austria just got Burgundy for free. I mean, I'm not complaining too much because honestly, having Austria as an ally is a sweet deal. Hey, Austria ditched Hungary. You know what that means. I gotta do it too because Hungary is about to get a visit from Austria. Oh, but now Poland wants an alliance cool beans can't believe it, forming an alliance with the Ottoman Empire, the Mamluks. Now, he should be safe during the bankruptcy fiesta. Goldmine is booming, even dialing down autonomy here. Sure, that might trigger some rebellions, but who cares? Already cleaned up the rebellious gang, nothing on the horizon, smooth sailing for a few years. True, I'm taking the risk of the Ottoman Empire giving me a surprise visit in three years, but hey, no risk, no reward. Actually make it two years. What's gonna happen if I hit this button? Minus 50% morale. Navy takes a nosedive by 50%. We'll be running low on human resources, pricier mercenaries, and so on and so forth. Basically, it's like going back to the Stone Age. Definitely not the prime moment to tackle this mission. Could have done it way, way earlier. Alright, I've decided to steer clear of bankruptcy lane. Our truce with the Ottoman Empire is too short. We'll just attack them shortly. We're two military technologies behind, lacking a big army, and who knows, maybe someone else will attack them, or perhaps try to go after the Mamluk Sultanate. That's when we'll start building up. Sure, I'm in significant debt, but I'm counting on the Ottomans to slowly pay it off. We're in the green, March 73, and honestly, we're going for it. Our goal is to reclaim our national provinces, and if things go well, we might grab a few from Bulgaria since, well, I let them go right before this war. Yes, we'll be sieging Adirin in this war. I'll see if I'll call in allies. Everything hangs on this one battle. And miraculously, I have a military advantage, tech-wise, so we crush the Ottoman forces with ease. Okay, maybe not ease, but I'm doing what I did before, and that's annihilating the Ottoman army while heading here, sinking the Ottoman fleet again. This new Byzantine naval doctrine is a beast. Almost their entire fleet went down. Okay, we'll try systematically wrecking the Ottoman Empire's army this time. Let them come at me on this fortress. You know what? I decided to pull a clever move. Declare bankruptcy during the war with the Ottoman Empire. Because now I have five years to kill, around two, three years of war with the Ottoman Empire. A lot of rebellions will pop up. Poland and the Mamluks will come to my rescue, dealing with those rebellions. I'll just chill here, maybe in Moldova. I heard it's lovely there this time of year, especially when your economy is non-existent. Mainly, it stems from the fact that, if you're curious, we don't have religious unity. See, we don't accept that religion. Local goods production modifier is at minus 60%. Taxes are at minus 60%. Playing the Latin Empire without converting Orthodox provinces is a real challenge, especially when Lucas is Lucas and forgets about certain privileges that could help him. Oh, the Mamluks are doing it. Poland is doing it. See? So, pit 5. Let my allies handle all the revolts. Best time for bankruptcy. I'm mainly using this war to suppress rebellions, nothing more. And bankruptcy is about to end. 
and it's over. Wonder if I'll pay off anything after this war, because yes, I have new debts. Basically, we've cut off the Ottoman Empire here. Maybe Bulgaria will get these territories, maybe not. Who cares? Meanwhile, we continue with our conquests because we're rocking it. Hey, I might even pay off everything. No, okay, not everything. All right, everything, everything will be paid off. But seriously, the conditions for going back to orthodoxy seem impossible. One point of religious tolerance? Heretics? How with a minus six? Heck, even honestly, I've calculated everything and I can't reach plus one. Okay, taking two here, two from ideas, fixing one with legitimacy, and I'm still two points short. Okay, I'll have to ditch a state and embrace humanist ideas, that's plus one. But I still need one more point. This means we're taking humanist ideas, and at this point, I even need to focus on administrative points. Checking policies, I need divine ideas to increase tolerance. Still missing one point somewhere. Don't know how it happened, but lucky break, the union of Naples with Aragon is broken, so we're attacking, ending the war real quick, and let me tell you, I'll take one less province than I could because I'm into that sweet genuine trade, of course. Taking war reparations or not? Taking war reparations and we're grabbing a nice foothold right next to Rome because we'll need it in the future. A quick war with Hungary, grabbing Bulgarian territories, loved it. Also got a good chunk of money. Somewhere along the way, I goofed. Don't ask me how, but I must have absentmindedly clicked and agreed to make Bulgaria our march. Don't do it, it's better to make it a province, or however you pronounce it, then you get all of Bulgaria for free. No need to annex it. Honestly, it's a riot. My war reparations are bigger than my gold income. And you say I have a good gold mine. Well, just that penalty for religious intolerance should have converted it to Catholicism. Now, I've got to deal with Poland. Such is life, such is life. Fingers crossed. At least I've got a six in maneuvers, finally. I can kick that genuine junk out of the city. It took me forever. But hey, Poland defended. So that's something. Almost cost me my gold mine, though. So let's go snatch it back. No, Russia didn't just do that. Thanks, Russia. Russia. You just lost the war, ECPC. And what's this interesting turn of events? Seriously, Crimea. Okay, I think it's a good time to use our golden age. But it's probably only called a golden age by name, as Byzantium, to save some cash, and start now, I'm going for it. And if anything, I've dished out all those privileges that also increase the acceptance of heretics in my country. Just so you know, a bit late and religious intolerance shot up significantly. But anyway, I need to refresh all the info about religious intolerance in this game. Well, I've created an Ottoman reserve, just in case nobody tries to nab it. Okay, now, check this out. I've demoted Bulgaria from being my march, made it my my province, and now we're restoring the right to inherit for the empire, actually cancelling their right to inherit, and now we'll be grabbing everything. But they'll be very, very, very disloyal, plus 50%. But when Emperor Augiros Mezelenos kicks the bucket, interesting, Emperor of the Empire. Bulgaria is an empire, and I'm also an empire. Interesting, I can make the Latin Empire Protestant. Anyone ever played like that? These rebellions are getting bigger, seriously, much bigger. Okay, I need to get Constantinople. What am I saying? Yeah, I need to get Rome, finally, hold on, hold on, what? Ah, I need more temples in Orthodox provinces, but how do I get that tolerance? This is nuts because I'm wiping out the first 30,000 rebels. Here's another 21,000. And I just got an event for another 31,000. There's not that much population in this country. Okay, I think I know how I'll increase tolerance in our country. I've made another mistake. Constantinople should have been converted to Catholicism as quickly as possible. Because you see, Hagia Sophia is working for me right now. And in this campaign, I've made three pretty big mistakes so far. Convert Kosovo to Catholicism. Same with the capital. And finally, grant privileges for tolerance as quickly as possible. I wonder what will happen to our requirements if I just remove the entire clergy. Because I can do that right now. Oh, I can't restore orthodoxy anymore. We don't want to do that. And right now, it's blocking the whole mission tree we have here. Oh no, this time I'll reform my army, not mercenaries. We're going for it. And it worked finally after about 30 draws. I got a missionary. And I can convert Constantinople. That means we need to prepare for the war for Rome. It's best to grab it at the very very end because remember we're a Catholic country so I also need to build 10 churches. And the Bulgarian ruler, or rather the Bulgarian emperor, died. We got all that territory and in terms of autonomy what will it be after integrating the vassal? Oh no, practically zero. This is a very powerful mechanic. Very powerful. Constantinople converted, finally. Finally, which should raise my tolerance, or at least should raise the tolerance of heretics now. And great, we'll still need two more points. I know we'll get one point on the 10th administrative, which I'm pretty sure about. Looks like we can't avoid expansion. Another thing I want to test is switching faith to the reform. Interesting, the requirements have decreased even more. I don't even have to conquer Rome. Okay, you know what? I'll do it like this. I'll complete the mission for the church right away, then sell the land in three years, and boom, we'll restore orthodoxy. So, okay, I'm not changing 
engine yet, but you know, it was all planned, I just kept you in suspense so you wouldn't know that I already know everything and that some company is going so smoothly. It was all planned. I didn't have to feel that tolerance. Convert Constantinople. No, no, no. Seriously though, now we wait three years to have 60% clergy unity here. I thought that when I got rid of orthodoxy in Constantinople, rebellions wouldn't pop up here. Well, I was wrong. The Ottoman Empire Reserve has just ceased to exist, which means the condition for 50 years of war with the Ottoman Empire has been lifted. So our empire is looking pretty good now, and soon, God, it will be a true empire because seriously, compared to playing normal Byzantium, which has to fight a tough war with the Ottoman Empire, at the beginning, the Latin Empire is much weaker. I have a feeling that even making the Latin Empire from these crusaders is much easier than making it from Byzantium, although I won't deny that there are many things here that I didn't want to do, like wars with Venice, war with Genoa, to acquire all these things. I'm probably saturated with Byzantium and its surroundings for now, so let me know which countries you'd like to see a campaign from. And at the moment, we have 73% loyalty from the clergy, which will not lose any of that loyalty when we change faith. There's one more thing that really interests me here. Oh, we can't be allies with any Catholic country, so alliances are gone, Pope. Oh, the Commonwealth. And thanks to this, we can say it's time to end the union of churches and restore orthodoxy. Oh God, Lucas, you never read anything. The question is, what would happen if I went back to Catholicism? You know what? I'll check that path, conquer Rome now, and then return to Catholicism. I'm curious if that option will reappear. After 10 years, I've decided that the path of reforming Christianity isn't for us. So we're back to Catholicism. And we don't have that option. Oh well, I thought I found a cool way. So in the midst of it all, we're rolling back time and going for a regular war. Oh, Rome, I have too much yellow on this screen. But Rome is conquered and done. Hagia Sophia is already building to the highest level. Although, I'll probably speed it up with my manpower. Oh no, I don't have much of it. You know what surprised me? I don't have a penalty for owning Rome. Really, it's not here. Oh, come on. 36,000 in Constantinople and my army is unpaid. Just waiting and collecting to build Hagia Sophia to the highest level. But who are the second? I haven't beaten them yet. Let's celebrate. We built a monument. Super. I'm very happy. My people are also very happy for that reason. Again, we bid farewell to my allies and it's time to restore orthodoxy in our country. It was probably the most challenging but quite an interesting path. Maybe it would have been even more interesting for me if, I say, I didn't play so often in this particular region. We've become Byzantium again, we have our cool color, we've restored our religion and so many provinces to convert. All the events related to the conquest of a given territory are firing off. Listen, all the events are firing off for me. Fortunately, we can also have my allies back, faithful, maybe, I don't know, they might change their minds. Polls every moment. It was a tough campaign, and if you want to see another campaign with an interesting and challenging start, I recommend this episode, where we create the mighty empire of the black sheep at the end.